Hello, this is Dr. E from La Cunata High School. Today, we're going to extend our knowledge of Glo Unit 9, Global Change. We're going to be talking about 9.4 and increasing greenhouse gases. Our objectives is to identify the threats to human health and environment posed by increasing greenhouse gases. The essential knowledge is to understand what the causes uh, of the uh, greenhouse gas in the atmosphere can lead to a variety of environmental problems, including sea level rise, melting ice sheets, ocean expansion, disease vector spread. And we're going to, the skill you need to know is how to explain uh, environmental concepts and processes uh, represented visually how they relate to broader environmental issues. So why are the sea levels rising? Thermo one of the reasons is thermal expansion. That's the number one wet reason. As water molecules increase in temperature, they move faster, and therefore they move slightly farther apart when they're heated. All water molecules of the ocean are moving slightly apart. This leads to this sea level rising. We also have melting polar and glacial ice. The increased greenhouse gases lead to a warmer climate and more melting of ice sheets both at both poles and glaciers throughout the world. Uh, this figure flows, uh, this water flows into the ocean and leads to more sea level rise and more thermal expansion. As we can see here, we can see that due to thermal expansion, there is a slight increase due to added meltwater, there is a more of an increase. And since 1995, we have seen uh, up to 10 centimeter rise in sea level due to both thermal expansion and the melting of the, uh, sea, uh, of the ice. The environmental impacts of the sea level rise are flooding of coastal regions like estuaries, mangroves, and salt waters, Miami Beach, Long Beach, Loss of species that depend on Arctic and tundra ecosystems such as polar bears, penguins, reindeer. Loss of thaws free cycle that glaciers go through, depriving surrounding ecosystems and human communities of water source, such as in South America. Asia, both of those, uh, tons of different places, including California, depend on glaciers for their water. And so, once you see this, this is in Alaska. No, you don't. This is the same shot, uh, approximately 60 years apart. Only 60 years apart. Human impacts, relocation of human populations. You can see that these areas right here are going to be flooded. India, it's estimated that uh, multiple millions of people are going to have to move. Here you can see a lot of these places, New York City, New Orleans, are all going to be flooded. Increased flood frequency means higher insurance and repair costs, lost property. Saltwater intrusion <clears throat> into your drinking water because the salt water is going to push in on the groundwater and is going to contaminate the, the groundwater and the wells that supply the water. Also, disease vectors, uh, such as the mosquitoes. These living organisms, usually mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, can trans transmit diseases from humans to humans or from animals to humans. For example, the malaria, the Zika, the West Nile, dinky fever, cholera. They are going to have an expanded range because of warmer temperatures. They are going to allow the insects, the mosquitoes, T, uh, ticks and so forth, to spread to parts of the world that were previously too cold. As the insect vectors expand, their range will further will get further and further from the equators towards the poles. New populations will be at risk. Here is where the current vectors for dengue fever, Zika virus, and yellow fever can be. Here in the red, it's 12 months a year. <clears throat> Here, it's only one month a year. It is expected that by the year 2080, but due to increase in climate change, warmer temperatures, that LA, Florida, most of Central America will have the mosquito 
India, Southeast Asia, will have the mosquito 12 months, 11 to 12 months a year. If we exceed the Paris Agreement goals, it will not be business as usual. So practice FRQ 9.4. Can you identify a region in this map that's talking about malaria by 2050, where the yellow is current distribution of the malaria, green is unsuitable, um, where it will be uh, unsuitable for the vector by the year 2050, and red is climates where it's going to be newly infected by the 2050. Can you identify a region where malaria rates may increase by the year 2050? And can you explain how climate change may contribute to the, this increase in malaria in this region? Thank you, and hopefully that was helpful.